All right, so part two, we are going to be multiplying polynomials. I'm going to teach you two ways, as always, and pick your favorite. First off, we're going to be doing the box method, which is my personal favorite. But remember, when you are multiplying polynomials, you are going to have to add your exponents, okay? So using the box method, uh, my first polynomial has three terms. My second one has two terms. So I need to make a box. And I like to put the first one on top. So I've got three terms on top. So some lines. And then I'm going to have two spaces over here. So again, your box could be turned on its side. Up to you. The first polynomial will get its first box. My second term will be in the next box. If you want to put the sign with it, you can. And then I've got a positive 4 with my last one. And then my other term, x minus 3, I'll split up in the one box. And then your negative 3 will be on the outside of the other box. And now we're just going to multiply and make sure to remember that we're going to add our exponents. So ax times an x squared. I'm going to add my exponents. There's an imaginary 1 here. So I'm going to have three x's, so negative x cubed. Because 2 here, 1 here, Adam will get you a 3. Multiply an x by a 2x, and so this 2 comes in front because there is an imaginary 1 in front of that x. 2 times 1 is 2, and then I've got 2x's, so x squared. Then I'm going to multiply a 4 by an x, which is just a 4x. So I've multiplied my top row and then moved to my second row. Um, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So I'm going to have a positive 3, and I just drop down my variable x squared. I'm going to multiply a negative 3 by a positive 2, negative 6, drop down your x value. And then lastly, I'm going to multiply negative 3 and positive 4 to get negative 12. After you are done multiplying, you're going to combine like terms, and it's always going to be the diagonals. So this diagonal, my like term is an x squared. And this diagonal, I can combine like terms of the x. So your first term will always just be in your answer, negative x cubed, after I combine these. So I'm going to add 3 and 2 to get 5 x squared. Tricky part is you want to keep multiplying because you just did and put 6. But when you're combining like terms, you're going to have to add. And then I'm going to add a negative 6 plus a 4, which would be negative 2. And then tack on your x. And then the last number is a negative 12. And so that is your answer from multiplying your two polynomials using the box method. My personal favorite. But of course, I will teach you another way. We'll see if you like it better. All right, we're going to multiply in a horizontal format. So again, we need parentheses. Your first polynomial is y plus 5. And I'm not going to put a plus or a minus because I'm not adding or subtracting. I'm multiplying. So 3y squared minus 2y plus 2. Okay? So when you're multiplying, you are going to be distributing. So this y is being multiplied to that entire polynomial. So I'm going to write y and then copy the second parentheses. y squared, 3y squared minus 2y plus 2. And then you also need to multiply this 5 to that entire parenthesis. So I'm going to have a plus 5 being multiplied to your second parenthesis. Your second parenthesis will always repeat. And then we just have to distribute. So let's get it. Remember, we're going to add our exponents. So y times 3y squared would be 3y cubed, because I've got 3y's. Multiply y by a negative 2y. Your coefficient drops down. You've got 2y's, so y squared. And then y times 2 is a positive 2y. Keep going with the 5. 5 times 3 is a 15, so a positive 15y squared. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Drop down the 1y, 
And last but not least, 5 times 2 is a positive 10. Now I have to combine like terms. So let's circle and box. My highest exponent, 3y cubed. Nothing else has a cubed, so that's part of my final answer. 3y cubed. Moving on, I've got a y squared term. Negative 2y squared plus 15y squared. 15 minus 2 would be a 13. Positive 13y squared. Move on to your y terms. I've got a positive 2y and negative 10. So 2 minus 10 is negative 8. Y. And last but not least, just tack on that plus 10 because it cannot be combined with anything. Okay? So totally up to you if you want to distribute horizontally and combine like terms or if you like the box method. Totally up to you. Okay? I will say I personally like the box method better, so I will be doing that in the future. So not only can you multiply two polynomials, you can also multiply three polynomials. So let's scroll down. When you are multiplying three polynomials, it is the same process, just two times the work. So first off, let's multiply these first two polynomials of x minus 1 and x plus 4. So I've got two terms and two terms, so I'm going to do the box method, and I only need two boxes on the top and two boxes on the side. So my first polynomial is an x, negative 1. My second polynomial is an x and a positive 4. So let's multiply those. x times x would be x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. x times 4 is 4x. And then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Combine your like terms. It's always going to be your diagonal. So my answer. The first box will come down x squared. 4 minus 1 is 3. So a positive 3x. And then drop down your last number, minus 4. So that's the answer for multiplying two polynomials. And now I just need to multiply that and that to get my final answer. Okay? So technically... I need to multiply your one answer by the final polynomial. So let's do another box over here to the side. This time I'm going to have three terms on top. So I need three boxes on top, two boxes on your side. So I'm going to do your first term, x squared, 3x in the middle, negative 4. And then your next term would be an x and a positive 5. If you want to put the pluses, you can. You don't have to. So let's multiply these out. x and x squared is x cubed. x and 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 4 would be a negative 4x. Now just multiply everything by 5. 5 times x squared would be 5x squared. 5 and 3 would be 15x. 5 and negative 4 would be negative 20. And last but not least, combine like terms. Always your diagonals. So your first term is x cubed. After I add 5 and 3, you would get 8x squared. Try not to multiply. You're going to add a 15 minus a 4 to get 11. And then drop down your minus. So that would be your final answer after multiplying three binomials. Okay, so just two problems, same steps, just a little bit more work. Okay, now there are some special cases when multiplying polynomials, something fancy happens on the next three terms. Now I will say, you have to memorize all of this. Otherwise, there is no point in learning this special pattern, okay? So if you're like Miss Natour, I will not memorize that, no way in heck. Then just do it how you do it normally. Use your box method. But I will show you some cool things. So some binomials uh, occur frequently so that it's worth memorizing. So here are the following identities. I've got some in difference. So if your parentheses is the exact same, but one plus and one minus, the answer will be the first term squared 
minus the second term squared. So what that means is this is my a term, 4n. So if I square 4n, that's like multiplying 4n times 4n. 4 times 4 is 16, n times n is n squared. So that's my first term. You will always have a minus. And then you're going to square your second term. So my second term was a 5. If I multiply 5 and 5, I get 25. So my answer is 16n squared minus 25. Now, again, if you don't want to memorize that, do the box method, okay? Honestly, the same amount of work. You've got a 4n and a positive 5. You have a 4n and a negative 5. And then multiply. 4 times 4, we know is 16n squared. 5 times 4 is 20, so 20n. Negative 5 and a positive 4 will get you a negative 20n. And then negative 5 times a positive 5 is a negative 25. If I combine like terms, 20 and positive 20, negative 20 will cancel out. So that is why my answer was only 16n squared minus 25. Okay, so that will always, always happen. If you've got two parentheses, same things, one plus one minus. So if you want to memorize this cool pattern, go for it. If you don't, don't. Um, the next cool pattern is if you have the exact same thing squared. And so unfortunately you can't distribute the squared. What this means is you've got 9y minus 2 twice. 9y minus 2. Now, here is your formula. Ours would apply to the bottom one because I have a subtraction problem. You square the first term, minus 2, multiply the two terms, and then add it to the last term squared. So what that would look like, my first term is 9y. So if I have a 9y squared, and then minus 2 always, your a is your first term, which is 9y. Your b is your second term, which was a 2. And then plus whatever your second term is squared. My second term was a 2 and then squared. So my final answer, 9 squared is 81. y squared is y squared. Um, I need to multiply all this out. So negative 2 and 9 is negative 18. Multiply that by 2. Double 18 to get 36. So a negative 36, and then you drop down the y. And then 2 squared is 4. So there's our answer. However, I personally don't think that's a shortcut. And I personally forget that. So I'm just going to do the box method. So if you do the box method and put 9y minus 2, 9y minus 2, and multiply straight out, you would get 81y squared, negative 18y, negative 18y, positive 4, boom, that's how we got it, boom, that's how we got it, and we got negative 16 by adding negative 18 and negative 18. So in my personal opinion, memorizing these cool formulas will not help you. Just do your plain old box method. Now, I'm about to run out of time with this video, so don't worry about Jay. Definitely a tricky problem. If you want to try it, you can, and press pause, and I'll show you the answer. In three, two, one. Just kidding, I don't want to blow your mind. But um, don't worry about Jay. So thank you for watching this awesome video on multiplying polynomials. Now you can head to practice. Thanks for watching.